You know what time it is? It's prime time in the Mountain Time Zone. Colorado hiring Deion Sanders as its new head coach with a base salary of more than $5 million per year. Coach Prime led FCS school Jackson State to its first undefeated regular season in school history this year and back-to-back SWAC championships. Here's Dion now addressing his team about his decision to go to Colorado. I know y'all been hearing the rumors and uh, everything that's been transpiring around about uh, my whereabouts and what I'm going to do. And I'd like for y'all to hear it from me and not uh, from anyone else. Um, It is what it is. Either in coaching, you get elevated or you get terminated. Ain't no other way. You either elevated or terminated. And it ain't no gray yard for coaches where they die at the place. It don't work like that. They either gonna run you off or you gonna walk off uh, upon your own recognizance. I've chosen to accept the job elsewhere next year. I'm gonna finish what we started. We're gonna dominate. I'm gonna be here until that end and that conclusion. And then when that conclusion, we will move on. Either they run you off or you're gonna walk off. I like that. Deion Sanders um, had a heck of a career and a heck of a couple years at Jackson State. Now heading to the Pac-12, looking to turn around a Colorado program that's had two winning seasons in the last 17 years. Mile high with mile lows and now prime time. Coach Prime looking to get Colorado back on the map. And for more, let's welcome in 24-7 Sports College football analyst Carl Reed, who joins us from Jackson, Mississippi. He was at the SWAC championship. He's been speaking with Deion Sanders over the last few weeks here with a decision looming. Carl, what more can you tell us about Deion's decision to take the job at Colorado? I think it was a necessary step for him in his coaching career. He had done all that he could at Jackson State in terms of what he's done for that program. Back-to-back SWAC championships, undefeated this year, unbelievable program he's built. It's time for the next step. The most com- Football is one of the most competitive games, and it draws the most competitive men. And Dion is one of those guys. He wants to go test his medal at the highest level that college football has to offer. What are your conversations been with him? What has he told you about this process? Well, it's something that you have to be very thorough about because he had several suitors. He had several people that were interested in his services. And so it's all about making the right decision. And it's all about making sure that you're going to have the resources to compete at the highest level. Colorado seems to have made a huge commitment, not only with his salary, but with the salary pool for the assistant coaches, for the support staff, and the recruiting guys that you need. He's going to be able to compete with anybody in America from a recruiting standpoint. Well, you know he landed the number one overall recruit in the class of 2022, five-star corner Travis Hunter at Jackson State. What are you hearing about Hunter following Dion to Colorado? We haven't discussed that yet. Uh, That's fluid. That's something that I'm sure that Coach Prime and Hunter have conversations about. Um, in the coming days as as the transfer portal opens up on Monday. But that's not something that we have discussed. But what I will say is transfer portal opens Monday, December 5th, and it's going to be bananas. And I'm sure you're going to see quite a few really good football players choose to go play out in Colorado. Colorado's had two winning seasons in the last 17 years, Carl, even with the transfer portal. Why should we believe Dion can turn things around in Boulder? I wouldn't bet against him. I'll tell you what, when he went to Jackson State, I questioned would he be able to win there because of the lack of success that they had over the years. If it's one thing about Prime, he's committed, he's dedicated, and he has a very, very high level of self-belief. I would not bet against him in this situation. I think that he's going to recruit the very best players in the nation to Boulder, Colorado, and we're going to see a lot of success. And when you think about 
USC and UCLA leaving the Pac-12, there's no reason why he can't be in heavyweight matchups against Oregon and Utah to see who is going to be the top team in that conference. So you're saying Prime is putting the Pac-12 on notice? I'm saying that everybody in the Pac-12 better be aware that Deion Sanders is at the University of Colorado and he's going to be a major player there and everybody should be on high alert. 24-7 Sports College football analyst Carl Reed here on CBS Sports HQ with us. Carl, appreciate the insight here, my friend. Appreciate the conversation. All right, there you go. Dion's going to put uh, the entire Pac-12 on notice. You better pay attention. And uh, look, it's Deion Sanders. I mean, it's going to be uh, bright lights, big time shows, prime time in the Mountain West time zone. It's going to be uh, it's going to be quite the spectacle. But it won't matter if they don't win games, and they haven't been winning games. They've had just two winning seasons in the last 17 years. And you take a look at the numbers here since 2017. Um, it, it's pretty embarrassing. Among 65. Power five teams, winning percentage, 60th. Points per game, 61st. So Prime's got to get the buffs into the end zone. He's got to get them relevant once again in the, the schedule there, meaning his possible return will have missed games tonight at the Patriots, home against the Jets and Dolphins, and then a roadie in Chicago before he's eligible to return. Buffalo, of course, came into the season and for most of this season, the betting favorites to win the Super Bowl at Caesar Sportsbook. However, uh, even though they've won a couple games after sliding there, the Kansas City Chiefs have leapfrogged them for top spot on the betting board. All right, let's break down this breaking news with our NFL analyst, Lee J. Deucible. So again, Von Miller, we know why he came to Buffalo and how important he is to Sean McDermott in Buffalo. What's your first reaction to the news putting him on, on IR here? This is a massive blow because Vaughn literally was just on this podcast, Tommy, talking about I most likely could be back, you know, two weeks from now versus the New York Jets. And now to hear the news that he's going to IR, something must have come out medically that the Bills weren't expecting or maybe expecting. And that's why they didn't want to put him on IR right away. They were hoping out that he could maybe come back before that four-week period. But now it looks like he will be out all the way until that Bengals game at the earliest to come back. And this is a massive blow for the Buffalo Bills. You talked about it. Everybody knows why Von Miller came to the Buffalo Bills. 13 seconds, right? It's in their head. They needed a closer, and he closed for them when they played the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a guy that has eight sacks already this year, and he just does more than pass rush. He's an emotional leader on that team. The way he sets the edge in the run game is second to none. He's been doing it for over 10 years in this league in a high level. And he really brought Greg Russo along too, right? He was having a heck of a start to the season before he got hurt. Now, the good thing for the Bills is it looks like he could potentially come back tonight versus the Pats. But they're going to miss Von Miller badly. It's interesting. Von Miller personally trying to do a little bit of like the LeBron James thing, which is win three titles with three different teams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the bigger question also then becomes, Lige, four weeks at a minimum for IR, but a lot of Bills Mafia will argue, do we really need Von Miller until the playoffs? Can we hold him off until maybe at least January because of what the Chiefs, though, have done? What do you think about maybe holding off as long as you can with him? I mean, you got to be smart. This isn't a young player. Now, now, Von does a great job of taking care of his body. He still looks like he's only 27 years old out there on that field. But you have to be smart with a guy that has a lower body injury coming back from injury. Now, granted, you would, the Bills would probably hope that they were in a different situation in the AFC East. But you see it on the screen right there. They're in a dogfight. And they're 0-2 in the division. They got to start rallying off some of these division wins or they're not going to get a home playoff game. So on one hand, yes, you want to bring your closer back as quick as possible, but you also have to be smart. You just have to get into the playoffs and hope that Von Miller is close to 80 to 90 percent to be that closer for you in the playoffs. You don't want to rush him back and then potentially hurt him. And now he's out for the rest of the playoffs. You brought up Rousseau. We know Ed Oliver has been playing well. Leslie Frazier likes to rotate, uh, especially that defensive lineman group and that front seven. So Von Miller's out for four games. How do you anticipate the scheme? Will it change or any type of drop off? And, and we know there's going to be a drop off. The question yeah. is how much? Yeah, with Leslie Frazier, the scheme is the scheme. They play that cover two defense. They disguise it and they're multiple with it. But as you talked about, Tommy, right, they rotate that defensive line. 
Uh, Epineza is going to have to step up. Greg Russo, after being out for a couple of weeks, he's going to have to step up. Ed Oliver, last week, that was the game they've been waiting for Ed Oliver to have. He was AFC Defensive Player of the Week. He stepped up. Tim Seto, uh, Seto he's going to have to step up. They're just going to continue to rotate guys. Tremaine Edmonds comes back from injury. That'll help shore up that front seven as well. But it's going to be defensive line by committee. That's what the Bills were before they went and got Von Miller, and that's what they'll be while he's out for these next four weeks.